Today, I'd like to talk about uh, joint work with John Moa and Shen Qin Dan, Credit Horizon. To finance long term investment, entrepreneurs raise external funds against collateral, like uh, buildings and plant, or future revenues. When borrowing against the future revenue, they typically borrow against the near term revenue, like a few years worth of the revenue, not the long term. The question is why? That's the question of credit horizon. And uh, we are also interested in how credit horizon interact with farm dynamics and the evolution of productivity. And macro question we want to ask is uh, how can low real interest rate lead to a slower investment and growth? This is particularly relevant for countries like Japan, and where the low real interest rate failed to stimulate the economy in the last two decades or three decades almost. And uh, before going to the model, let's uh, illustrate the mechanism intuitively. Entrepreneur or engineer invest to construct jointly plant in the building and tools for future production. Tool is a metaphor for human capital or intangible capital. And output depends upon plant quality, which evolves over time. And the future plant quality depends upon current quality and the engineer's maintenance effort. Therefore, the longer the horizon, the plant quality depends more on engineering, engineer's cumulative effort. Engineer cannot pre-commit her future human capital. To finance investment, therefore, engineers sell the ownership of plant to a saver, like uh, outside shareholders. And uh, on each date, the plant owner the, who bought the uh, saver, who bought the plant, needs to pay fixed cost to operate plant. This fixed cost, you can think of the rental price of the building or opportunity cost of owning the building uh, where the plant is located. The owner hires engineer for maintenance at the competitive market. And once you invested the relationship between uh, plant and the engineer become competitive. Basically, any engineer can uh, do the maintenance job for any plant. And also plant owner can hire any kind of uh, the engineers in a competitive market. In that kind of environment, engineers' wage today equals the discounted value of high marginal impact, marginal product on today, tomorrow's output, and the future output. And crucially, this engineer cannot pre-commit to work for less than uh, wage, this wage. This is sometimes in literature called non-exclusivity constraint. Basically, the, you cannot uh, exclude uh, the agent uh, working for something else, uh, uh, some, somewhere else. Or, and uh, in that kind of environment, over time, the fraction of quality of plant attributable to engineers' cumulative maintenance increases, which means the owner's share starts declining. So that's why the owner will not value long-term revenue. They value only near-term revenue. As a result, the investing engineer who's, who raised the funds by selling the uh, plant, the, their borrowing capacity is governed mostly by near-term revenues. And in that kind of environment, uh, when the interest rate falls persistently, present value of fixed cost may increase more than owner's gross share, 
gross, owner's gross share is near term, while fixed cost is the long term. As a result, fixed cost present value, present value of fixed cost can raise, increase more than owner's share. That means the uh, plant price or the engineer's borrowing capacity may decline paradoxically by lower interest rate. Then investment and growth can decline. And uh, that's where uh, we try to formulate uh, the layout around the model. Do you have any questions or is it okay? <laughs> can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So, um, so, so the fraction of gross return of yeah. the owner falls and that, so what I understand is, so the fraction of the return of the engineer rises in the future yes, or does it yes, shape yes. them? So, so the engineer, this production, uh, we will lay out in the equation, but the plant quality depend upon current, uh, future plant quality depend upon current quality and engineer's maintenance, which means the, as time goes on, more and more engineers' contribution part gets bigger, and the contribution of the initial plant quality declines. That's why it, the, the wage share, the engineer's share going up, and the plant owner's share goes down. And the, the engineer has a competitive market. They don't have to stick in the same, pr same plant. Therefore, at the end of the day, engineer gets most of the returns, and which may not be enough, and the owner's return may not be enough to cover the, the uh, fixed cost. <laughs> That's where the low interest rate paradoxically reduces the owner's valuation of plant. And uh, so. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. Um, yeah. That's okay. Um, yeah. um, the, does this mean that the engineer actually gains more of the plants because their wages is higher? Yeah, so the higher wage helps to the, the, the engineer actually because of their contribution is the long term and the more and more their contribution dominant become dominant but Program is they cannot pre-commit to give the equal share to the owner. Therefore, at the time of investment, the engineer is short in cash. They want to raise more funds, but the, they cannot pre-commit to work for less than the competitive wage. As a result, they cannot invest much. That's the so exposed they gain, but the exante they cannot invest as much. That's the problem. Yes, that's a good question. How does that tie up with the overall mm. uh, disconnection between marginal rate of return of work and actual wages, for example, in the United States over yeah. the last 50 years? Uh, this is about the more like an insider, like an engineer, like who is a major contributor of the companies. Like a, the engineer who has a Share, uh, like a contributor, therefore their wage is uh, actually related to the company's fate. And, uh, More like a manager or like highly yeah, ranked. Or engineer who, yeah. who keep working for that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, what? Well, yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so uh, as the interest, interest rate fall, so the 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 owner of the the uh, plant, uh, their borrowing capacity reduce, and then uh, you know, as a general equilibrium effect, then they are less it's able to pay the wage yeah. to the engineer. Could yeah. this actually end up reverse the result? Because I think why engineer? I, I, I will come back on the the competing factor in general equilibrium. This is about yeah. Yeah, I will come back. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the model. So model is a small open economy where the 
uh, world real interest rate is exogenous to the, this economy. And uh, we ignore the uncertainty. This is the aggregate uncertainty. This is slightly uh, the, against the, <laughs> like the modern treatment of the macro finance, but uh, we try to understand the mechanisms in idiosyncratic uncertainty too. So for the moment, we are going to consider the steady state. This is mainly about the long run, not the short run dynamic. And uh, we only look at the unanticipated persistent drop in real interest rate. This is sometimes Sajan make fun of the MIT shock. <laughs> so it's unexpected, but uh, it happens. And uh, we, we are going to think about one good economy, uh, homogeneous, perishable uh, consumption and investment growth. And the uh, continuum of agent, which maximizes the uh, log utility of consumptions. Uh, the beta is a discount factor. We consider they are less patient, they are impatient uh, relative to the world interest. Rate. And each agent sometimes has an investment opportunity. We call it engineer or entrepreneur, and sometimes don't. We call it uh, saver. And the uh, likelihood probability uh, engineer have a uh, investment opportunity model uh, given today's engineer is pi d. And uh, the saber may become engineer uh, with probability pi s. Typically, we assume pi e is bigger than pi s. Uh, so there is a persistence of uh, investment opportunity. And each day, engineer, say E, can um, produce the plant and tools from good. This is X good will produce the plant, one unit of plant with initial quality one, which is a normalization, and also the tool. But tool is uh, um, entrepreneur specific for the engineer specific tool. This is a metaphor for the human capital or intangible capital. And the plant and tools are ready to use from next year. And because the engineer cannot pre-commit to work um, human capital uh, for free, they have to raise funds by selling ownership of the plant. So that's how they raise the funds for investment. And uh, each tool is specific to this uh, engineer who invested, and uh, only he knows how to use it unless he sells this plant to another engineer and teach how to uh, use them. <laughs> and, and the crucial part is the following production function. At each day, owner of the plant of the quality Z, hire uh, engineer. And uh, here the relationship between plant owner and the engineer is not one-to-one. -one. They can hire any kind of uh, engineers and the uh, tools together. And uh, who knows how to the, the tools. Uh, they hire basically tools. <laughs> and, uh, uh, together with an engineer who knows how to use it at the competitive rental price. So this is the wage rate, uh, wage rate of intangible capital or human capital. And um, the, the, to maintain the, uh, to produce the output as well as uh, quality. Then, uh, then what happens? Z, the quality Z plant by unit of plant and the higher H tools, and also they need the input F goods. This F goods is a fixed cost. I told you the fix, you need to pay the fixed cost to pay for the rental price or user cost of the uh, building where plant is located. So that's the fixed cost. And uh, then how much output comes? It's proportional. Z. 
So A is the aggregate productivity. C is the plant-specific productivity. And the trick is the plant. Some plant decays. Some plant survives. The lambda plant survives. And the surviving plant quality changes depending on current quality, Z, as well as maintenance effort, H. And the D line, which is the next period plant quality, depend upon both current quality as well as the engineer's effort. And this production function come from like a roundabout production uh, which the Austrian like uh, Ben Babel developed. Basically, the, at the end of the day, H is a dominant factor, but <laughs> the, the, it's kind of H will enter into the production function in a roundabout way. And uh, so, so that's the key trick, actually. The, everything comes from this production function, basically. And, uh, and then the depreciation factor of plant and tools are the same, lambda. So if it starts with one to one, it stays with one to one. But uh, uh, that's less important. And uh, the plant owner always has an option to stop. So just exit, shut down. Or they continue to operate. In that case, they hire engineer and uh, to think about next period quality. V is the uh, value of the plant with initial quality Z. The, and output will come A times B. And the next period, they hire engineer uh, H at uh, wage rate W and pay the fixed cost. And then at the end of the next period, the lambda fraction of plant stays and the, the quality changes to the new quality, D to the theta and H to the eta. So, and uh, this uh, very mind equation will tell you the how plant owner decides the production plant. And this depends upon how long you stay. And, uh, is it, are they going to stay forever or they are going to think about exiting uh, in some finite period? And uh, to think about the exiting in finite period, we can write down the uh, recursively the value function. S of zero of Z is you exit at the end of this period, then nothing, <laughs> so you just get zero. If you exit next period, then you produce next period A times B and pay the fixed cost F. But the next period is the last period. They don't hire any uh, engineer. And that's S1. S2 is the exit in two periods time. Then you have a trade-off. Next period should we hire some engineer at the wage rate W to maintenance or not. And uh, so you have a trade-off. H is entering into the bigger wage cost, but the result is the better quality in the two periods time. And uh, you can generally write down the, this value. S of T is the value of the plant which is exiting in T periods time. So then next period, you hire workers, the engineer, uh, optimally. And then the end of the next period, the plant is, uh, is going to exit T minus one period uh, time. So A, the price at time starts ticking up. And, and uh, basically the, the plant owner paper is going to decide how should we plan this uh, the plant manage to the plant. Should we stay longer? Should we stay exiting in finite time? And the value is basically, the value is the maximized value of entire uh, with optimal horizons. So basically here the 
plant rising is related to the value of the plant, which is related to the price of plant, which the uh, engineer can sell to raise the fund. That's where the plant horizon is related to the credit horizon. And it turns out to be the, there is a dichotomy, actually. There is a, uh, the, the cutoff plant, plant quality. If the plant quality is uh, above the plant, the dagger, then its optimum will continue forever. But the, cut, the plant quality is less than the dagger, you are going to exit. Uh, in finite time. And uh, let me write it down the, uh, the, the value S of T. So S of infinite is continue forever. So, and uh, uh, the S of 20 and the S of 1 is a finite period. S of 1 is you are exiting uh, next period. S of zero is actually the horizontal line at the zero. So, and uh, you can see the, uh, if Z is less than F over A, the, it's actually better to exit straight away. The output A times B doesn't cover even the fixed cost. You exit straight away. Between F over A and the Z dagger, better to exit in finite time. So, and the, the higher the Z, the actually the staying longer because of you have a higher quality, you can make money on that. And then at the Z dagger, the plant quality or plant productivity Z dagger, the plant owner is indifferent between staying forever and exiting in this example, 20 periods time. And above Z dagger, they're going to stay forever. That's the optimum um, production plan. And the alternative way of looking at is the, uh, what is the maximum time period, the credit horizon or the plant horizon. And uh, at Z dagger point, the uh, if the product, the uh, quality is nine tenths of the dagger, red line, actually you see the optimum point is around 12 period. Like uh, you, you, it's best to exit in 12 periods time. At the Z dagger point, actually the blue line. So the plant owner is indifferent between uh, staying, uh, exiting in 20 periods and staying forever. Above the Z dagger, like 10% uh, higher than Z dagger, it's better to stay forever. This is the uh, plant, uh, the, uh, the how owner choose the uh, plant pricing. And when you look at the indifferent case, you see the, uh, the left hand side is the exiting guys. They exit in 20 period. So initially the engineer's share, this is a wage and the, and the owner's share is output minus, owner's gross share, output minus wage to the entrepreneur is the, uh, the owner's owner's share. And you see the at 20 period, they are going to um, exit. So, so therefore they are going to don't maintain too much. They actually decay the qualities because of they are planning to exit in 20 periods. And the last period they don't maintain at all. So that's where the, and the 20, uh, period, it, it's just 21, it's a quality becomes zero. While right hand side is the people, the plant owner who plan to stay for uh, the, forever. 
in that environment, actually the owner is hiring engineer and uh, maintain vigorously and the productivity actually increase over time instead of declining. And uh, most of the like a recent uh, industry dynamics literature is following the exogenous productivity uh, line, like a Hoppenheim model or Merritt's model. This model is different because of the plant quality, ZT plus one, depend upon current quality as well as intention endogenous uh, the effort of the entrepreneur or uh, engineers. Nobu can I ask a yeah. quick question. Yeah. So how important is the concavity driven by theta and eta? If you yeah. change the importance of the two, is yeah. this yeah. changing the cutoff a lot? And understand it correctly that it's perfect foresight. Once I have started my plant, I know exactly when I will exit. No, there's yeah. no uncertainty yeah. anymore. Yes, they are going to plan uh, entire futures. And uh, the right hand side, they stay forever. Left hand side, they stay. Uh, they, they stay on the 20 period. So that's the optimally chosen because of the, the, this blue line, which is the indifferent between staying 20 years or 20 period versus the staying forever. And the, the theta plus eta matters, yes. If theta plus eta is one, this is constant return to scale. And then, Actually, the plant eventually depend up, all depend upon the engineer effort. And uh, while the, if it's less than one, there is a something else, say there, which is belong to the buildings, basically. The buildings contribution has a some effect. So that's where the difference comes from. But the largely the important part is the, how the plant owner plan for future, which dep will determine the plant horizon and the credit horizon. And I told you in the introduction, there is an alternative way of looking at things. This is the uh, way to think about the wage. So at each period- Sorry, can I ask again, why yeah. is this eta so small compared to the theta? In your calibration, you need it this way? Yeah. Like eta so is. Eta is tiny, uh, while the theta is big, which means the initial the, the plant, plant quality has a persistence, and uh, which is empirically true, I <laughs> think. Okay. Okay. But there is an endogenous component, which cumulatively, eventually, it determines the fate of the plant. So. So that's where the, the horizon comes. And uh, when the plant owner choose how much engineer to hire, they are having the competitive labor market for the engineer. Therefore, wage depend upon marginal product. And the marginal product to the next period output is the first step. But the next period, ZT plus one, the plant productivity changes with the HT. Uh, then this will feed back into the ZT plus one, uh, ZT plus two by theta through the uh, Douglas production function. And uh, two periods later, it's like again. So, so then even, and uh, you can see the wage is not just the marginal product of next period, it's actually the present value of the entire future's continuation. And uh, that means that when you multiply today's uh, engineer's number, eight, the today's wage bill is the uh, eight of fraction of models output, present value, and eight of theta fraction of two periods output, eta theta square of that, and the entire futures the declining and the proportional factor component depend upon theta. And uh, that means that when you look at the borrowing capacity, today's plant, which is the initial quality one, the, it's partly 
tomorrow's output, net of the fixed cost. But the two periods later, it's a today's wage is actually reflecting tomorrow's contribution, eight of fluxes. So, so that's the uh, plant owner's share next period to, to uh, day two. Day three, it becomes uh, one minus eta minus eta theta. And uh, as time goes on, it starts declining. And uh, so another way to look at the share is the initially owner's uh, productivity is initial plant quality, so A times V. And, uh, but uh, over time, engineer's share is increasing and the uh, owner's share is declining. That's where the uh, near-term horizon matters. Uh, the the right-hand side is continuing forever, but the, you see the owner's share, gross share, is actually in the big in initial type, initial period, but the eventually it disappears. And uh, if theta plus eta is one, actually owner share goes to zero eventually. And uh, it doesn't stop in the, the lower level. It does go to zero. That's where the credit horizon is near term, not the long term. And uh, when you subtract the fixed cost gross uh, from owner's gross share, actually the owner is uh, become, gross share become less than uh, the fixed cost in the long run. And uh, you might say, in that case, why they don't shut down? The, the, problem, the answer is once you pay the wage, and uh, even if wage reflects uh, their future contributions, it's a bygone. The past wage bill is already gone. Therefore, uh, the owners has an incentive to keep going. And uh, this, if you look at the alternative way of looking, static way of looking at, period by period way of looking at, every period owners share <laughs> is still positive. But when you take account the partly wage come from contribution to future production, uh, the owner's share is actually negative. So this is the date zero point of view instead of date T point of view. And uh, that's where the, uh, the near term come from. And the rest of them, we put into the general equilibrium model. So, so do you see the, this one? Is it okay? I will come back to them. <laughs> so, so then the budget constraint of uh, the engineer who is investing is the consumption plus the down payment. Remember X is the unit cost, B is the uh, plant price. Uh, borrowing capacity, how much they can raise funds um, to setting the plant. And the I is investment. And the DT plus one is buying the financial asset. And the, this is the generic product uh, budget constraint of both engineer and the saver. And uh, if you are engineer last period, the, you earn the uh, income, W plus H. And uh, uh, you have a financial asset, that's the D. And uh, if you are investing today uh, as an engineer, tomorrow's um, number of tools on human capital changes according to HT plus one equal lambda H plus IT. And uh, if you write down this as a gross way, you can write it down as the uh, consumption plus down payment for investment and uh, for uh, to get the HT plus one and uh, financial assets equal net worth. What is a net worth? Net worth is uh, not just wage, but uh, also replacement cost of the current uh, human capital. 
And uh, if the rate of return of investment is higher than interest rate, uh, what is the rate of return of investment for engineer? Uh, you, it costs X, but uh, you can borrow B by unit by selling the plant. So down payment is X minus B. That's the money you need for internal fund. How much you get next period, you can earn the uh, return of human capital tools, W, and also I, you, replacement cost is a lambda fraction, remaining fraction of tools, X minus B. So if that is bigger than R, the investing entrepreneur or engineer uh, is just, uh, they spend everything into the investment. The saver, on the other hand, they don't have investment opportunity, they just buy the financial asset. And this is perhaps Yuri and the Marcus explained the things. Uh, so that's the investment is net worth relative to the uh, net, the down payment. And the steady state equilibrium is basically uh, characterized by two price ways and the new plant price B, which is the same as borrowing capacity. And uh, each individual choose a quantity optimally and the fullness uh, D star is the endogenous to the And uh, the uh, aggregate part, we can, I will go quickly because of the this is similar to the uh, Marcus and Yuri's model. Basically, top equation is how much the, um, the engineer is going to, entrepreneur or engineer is going to invest. That's the, um, the net worth. The entire net worth of engineer is going to uh, spend on the down payment for investment. And uh, the savers uh, net, net, net worth after uh, consumption is going to the financial asset and so on. And the growth rate will depend upon uh, how much the, the entrepreneur has a uh, rate of return, RE, and also how much the new entrepreneur engineer comes from the savers. And uh, for detail, Please look at our paper. But let's go to the property tax. The member says about the cut off the quality of the plant. In the propositions, uh, it's a cut off fixed cost. The, and the fixed cost is low, then economy is going to continue. Nobody will stop. Basically, the critical level of the, uh, the plant quality to continue is less than initial quality. So initial quality is high enough, everybody continues. And uh, if everyone is plant owner continues, the tools to plant ratio is going to stay at the same ratio as initial ratio one to one. As a result, in this example, like a plant quality stays forever. So uh, the same as initial quality one. And uh, if the fixed cost is higher than that critical level, and then the plant owner become indifferent between staying forever or stopping in finite period. Uh, Z dagger critical level of the plant quality uh, is equal to the initial quality, which is one. And the people who say uh, is going to hire uh, more engineer than the plant. Therefore, they are going to increase the qualities. And uh, if we decreasing return to scale, it converges to some point to be star. Uh, but constantly return to scale, plant quality keep increasing. And, uh, and then while the stopping plant is actually uh, stopped, 
in uh, the infinite time and uh, stop just before the uh, plant quality fail to cover the big stop. And uh, turns out to be there is no equilibrium which everybody stops. The, the reason is if everybody stops, there are too many engineers or too many tools related to the plant. And uh, the rental price, the wage rate is going to adjust. And uh, as a result, there is only two types of equilibrium. Either everybody continues when fixed cost is low enough, or some fraction of uh, fixed cost is high enough, then people become uh, plant owner is indifferent. And uh, so that's our equilibrium. And uh, let's look at the uh, thing, the main proposition we can say is the, uh, there is an open set of planters, pure equilibrium with no stopping, nobody stops exists. And in that environment, unexpected permanent increase in- Noble can ask permanent. another question. Sorry. Yeah. So you have these two equilibria. In both yeah. equilibria, you will provide the result that if the interest rate goes too low, it might be detrimental. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the, this uh, cutoff depends upon interest rate. Therefore, when interest rate changes, type of equilibrium might move around. Yes, yeah. So and if you have a setting where when you initially you have a random draw, like from yeah, a yeah, distribution yeah. of the Z. Yeah, yeah, it can move, it type of equilibrium can change. So for example, if interest rate is high enough, then everybody continues. But when interest rate lower, then somebody starts dropping. And while the remaining people, remaining plant keep improving the quality. This is possible, yeah. So if I think in terms of zombie banks, so yeah. a low interest rate leads to more, a uh, zombie firm, sorry. The, the, Can you connect it to zombie arrangement or this doesn't? More like uh, the exiting, more people are eventually <laughs> exiting. The, but it might stay for a long time actually. So in this case, exiting in the, for staying for a long time before staying is a zombie. So, so declining people, uh, stopping people in the long time is a zombie. Actually. Um, hello, Nobu. Uh, so, so if a plant has higher quality, mm -hmm. then, sorry, I, I, I don't remember the assumption. Does the plant sell its product? Yeah, the, the thing is the initial plant quality is all one. Start with one. There is no idiosyncratic shock or heterogeneity. We are thinking about the heterogeneity later, but uh, right now it's a stripped down model which everybody, every plant has an equal starting quality Z, Z equal. Okay, okay, okay. Equilibrium, this type of initial homogeneity, the fate is going to be different. Some people start the game, some people is improving. And that, that's, that's how this uh, economy behaves. Yeah, and I was thinking maybe the most the the one with the highest quality will take over the economy in the no no it will be some fractions but not dominant so if you have a actually the heterogeneity yes high quality choose to stay low quality choose to exit but eventually it converts uh, decreasing return to scale case it converges to some unique point actually reach that. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, so this is the uh, uh, pure equilibrium region. Uh, the unexpected drop in interest rate leads to the uh, lower growth. And the more actually the, everybody can be worse off. This is uh, slightly surprising because of the <laughs> borrower usually gains. Uh, with lower interest rate, but uh, in this case, everybody, including the saver and the uh, borrower, entrepreneur, and engineer, is going to lose. Why is that? The intuition is in uh, following. 
uh, it's related to the previous equations. Uh, if there is no stopping in uh, pure strategy to 11, the, the, the plant to engineer, engineer to plant ratio H is one. Therefore, value of plant is the output A per plant and also H Z stay one means the output stays in A. So the uh, profit is the output A minus wage and minus fixed cost divided by discount factor, uh, interest rate minus depreciation rate. So the uh, interest rate minus depreciation factor or net interest rate plus net depreciation uh, rate. And uh, but the wage is actually further looking animal, which the uh, as uh, so it's tomorrow's output fraction and the day after tomorrow's fraction. And uh, if you compute this uh, geometric series, you can see the wage is a present value of the uh, their contribution to the future output. And uh, you can see the wage actually increase when interest rate goes down. Wage is the hard looking long term and uh, this is not the wage of the simple worker. This is the wage of the engineer, like uh, uh, the people who are involved in production deeply. And uh, therefore their wage is a forward looking animal. And uh, because of wage go down, uh, the interest rate go down, wage go up, that effect can dominate the bottom effect, R minus lambda effect. And uh, when you look at the B effect, you can actually concentrate on the scale. You can write it down B, the plant value price is the present value of owner's share. Owner's share is lambda times theta discounted because of the, you see the waste had a uh, hard looking animal and uh, they are going to take away some fraction every period. So as a result, all the share, gross share, is near-sighted, near-term, lambda theta, while fixed cost is R minus lambda, lambda, no theta out there. So when interest rate go down, present value of fixed cost can go up more than present value of the owner's gross share. That's why the B, the plant price or the engineer's borrowing capacity can go down. And uh, if their B go down, <laughs> the, the investment go down and the growth rate can go down. And uh, well, if you want to check this empirically, what would you look at that, you know, an interest rate cut leads to higher wages for yeah, engineers? Uh, insider's wage is going up and uh, therefore, the, and the, empirically, sometimes the people value the company, including the buildings, actually. Mm -hmm. the, so, so when you think about the building is owned by the company. Is they, it like a book to market value? Yeah, of the, company, the, the stock market valuation of plant is actually B plus F over R minus lambda. So therefore, Stock market variation is A over R minus lambda, first time. So this is an increasing function. But when you think about the, the net, the, the interest rate go down, stock market go up. If the, all the, the company actually own the building, but the, it doesn't go up as much as building value. As a result, in net, when they invest, if they have to buy the buildings, actually the borrowing capacity, the growth value, spread and value doesn't go up as much as building price. And that's why the in net, they had more difficulty to invest. The building price shoots up, say San Francisco building price shoots up. And this type of growth uh, the present value of growth the revenue 
is higher, it doesn't, it's not enough to cover the uh, building price. And as a result, the uh, investment can go down. Right? So that's how empirically mapped into the stock market variation and uh, this credit horizon. And the key is the credit horizon of owner, plant owner is near term. It's because of the, every period they have to pay to the worker, which partly contribute to the future productions. And uh, that's why long-term future, it's can't go mostly to the uh, engineer, not the plant owner. Yeah. And uh, so, um, All right, can, can, can we go back to the previous slide? Yeah, so I was thinking, so this F is the fixed cost, the, uh, uh, they have to pay every period. Yeah, right? yeah. that's a building price. Yeah, so, so this F doesn't depend on the quality of the building. So yeah. no matter... Yeah, yeah, this is an opportunity cost. You can think of this as the land price or real estate price, generic San Francisco's real estate price. So not the particular building. Plant will depend upon the, of course, the quality, this age. So, but F part is a generic opportunity cost of the building. Okay, yeah. So the, when you look at the investment, it's a typical investment function in the aggregate is the net worth of the investing agent, engineer, uh, divided by the down payment. Down payment is the unit investment cost, X, minus the borrowing capacity per unit. And uh, you can see the, typically the net worth go up with interest rate go down. The weights go up typically and the uh, net worth is going up. This is uh, most of the macro finance literature we emphasize net worth effect. Like uh, uh, my paper with the more credit cycle, actually the uh, net worth is leveraged. They move a lot with the exogenous shock. But in this uh, paper, we are emphasizing borrowing capacity is reacting. And the borrowing capacity declines if uh, the owner's share is near sighted, near future, near horizon, while the fixed cost is long horizon. And uh, when the borrowing capacity declines, that effect dominates the net worth, positive net worth effect. Low interest rate leads to the lower growth, lower growth investment than growth. That's the, uh, I, we didn't say it's always, but it's possible. So that's the our, uh, implication of this model. And uh, concerning the mixed strategy reasons, uh, we don't have a much analytical results. So we rely on numerical example. And this is a numerical example we have. So interest rate uh, is between uh, zero and three percent. So we take it, so this is the comparative steady state. And uh, we choose the uh, 1.5 interest rate as a cutoff. At that point, uh, the regime switches. So, so higher than 1.5 interest rate, the economy is pure strategy, uh, everybody continuing leisure. While the, below the uh, 1.5 interest rate, uh, economy enter into the mixed strategy. Uh, some people quit, some people uh, stays. And uh, throughout, you can see the wages uh, uh, decreasing function of interest rate or interest rate go down, wage go up. Can you see? And the borrowing capacity is also increasing function of interest rate, which means the interest rate go down paradoxically, despite of their borrowing, borrowing capacity declines because of fixed cost increases more than the gross share of the plant owners. And uh, as a result, growth rate is now increasing function of interest rate or 
if interest rate go down, growth rate go down, uh, mixed strategy reasons, the quantity doesn't change as dramatically as uh, fixed the, the pure strategy reasons because of mixture changes, uh, fraction of continuing people versus the, uh, the stopping people uh, changes. And, uh, and uh, you can see the below the 1.5 interest rate, the Z dagger indifference curve, indifference point of quality is exactly the same as initial. While the higher than 1.5, the people are happy to continue at the initial point. And uh, only below 1.5, there is uh, the finite people exit finite time. Above 1.5, everybody continue forever. And the uh, stopping fraction is zero if interest rate is higher than 1.5, but the stopping fraction increases when interest rate goes down. And uh, the foreigners, uh, the positions, D star turns out to be negative, which means that despite of the, uh, this economy, foreigner is more patient than uh, the home economy. Uh, the home economy is lending to foreigners. This happens to perhaps the Marcus the, the Uris, uh, uh, case, like uh, the, the basically shortage of means of saving. The borrowing capacity is low. The saver is saving not just lending to the domestic fellow engineer, uh, they are buying the foreign assets. That's why D star is negative. And uh, uh, welfare of engineer and uh, is increasing function of R uh, in pure strategy reasons. And also uh, savers is increasing function. And the uh, other to be saver is more sensitive to interest rate naturally, but uh, uh, even engineer who is borrowing is actually loses if interest rate goes down. So that's the, uh, the, our result. So, so that's the most re our uh, result, but uh, you might say the, uh, how do you apply to this kind of framework? One way to apply is the housing market. So housing market, typically there is a uh, loan to value ratio constraint as well as loan to income constraint. And uh, when the uh, people who uh, live in the expensive place, like uh, San Francisco, or London, or New York, the loan to income constraint is binding constraint for the uh, mortgage. So first time buyer actually <laughs> try to buy the house Actually, the, when interest rate is lower, housing price go up. But uh, because of the first time buyer, loan to income constraint is binding, their borrowing capacity doesn't go up as much. So paradoxically, low interest rate, the first time buyer had a hard time to buy the house. And uh, where this house goes, second time buyer, old, old timer. Old timer is gaining from lower interest rate. Uh, but the first time buyer may be uh, crowded out. That's where the low interest rate actually hurts the investment of the first time buyer. And uh, as we discussed, if you have a heterogeneity, the, instead of indifference, the high Z people choose to stay or improve. Uh, low Z state people is going to um, exit. But uh, and also, if you have a recurrent shock, idiosyncratic shock, like the Oppenheim model, ours is uh, acting like a propagation. And looking at choice of maintenance is acting like a propagating. So high people uh, continue to become bigger and better, while low people are thinking, OK, it may be no longer viable to stay for too long, so they don't maintain too much. And, uh, so maintenance effort is increasing function of the Z. 
And uh, so that kind of things uh, we can do. And uh, uh, but the main contribution we have is that we provide a framework to think about plant horizon, which is related to the credit horizon, and then which has an implication for plant dynamics and the productivity dynamics, and also effects of aggregate effects of interest rate. And the uh, low interest rate can uh, reduce the investment. And so that is our model. Now, mm -hmm. can I ask a question? Yeah. So is capital R uh, exogenous here? Yes. Uh, this is a small open economy. Right, so I was thinking, could it be smaller than one? Because yeah, it can, but then we have a bubble and all these uh, other things come up and uh, which has uh, other uh, phenomena, which we have to worry about it. So, so once uh, the growth rate is lower than the uh, interest rate, bubbles show up. And that, so we are always a bit nervous about this growth rate uh, <laughs> picture and uh, try to make sure growth rate is uh, toward the end, close to one actually, the interest rate does uh, is lower than growth rate. But the, once the growth rate becomes lower than interest rate, we will have a bubble. And uh, we have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I was thinking, I think one of the mechanisms where uh, the owners of the plant, their uh, share, growth share decrease kind of depend on that capital R has to be larger than lambda? No. Uh, in our case, is, uh, R is always, lambda is typically lower. So, so we don't have a depreciation rate is usually, it's there. So, and uh, even negative interest rate, uh, it, it is not like a huge number. Typical number we have is talking about is less than 1%. So even Japan, well, real interest rate is not uh, more than minus one percent. So, and the depreciation rate is higher than that. So, so this is the present value is still probably well defined. Okay, thank you. Now it's the time to ask questions. Let me just. So, Nobu, you indicated you might have some heterogeneity in Z yeah. or Z, but is, is it similar to have a heterogeneity in F in the fixed cost? Can uh, you also have it? We, we didn't do that way. So, so the, we did think about the heterogeneity of initial investment cost. So then the opportunity is sometimes good opportunity, not so good opportunity. Who is going to invest? That's the heterogeneity. And then in that kind of environment, actually the low borrowing capacity hurts the good investment guys. So because of the, they, were, they are the ones who invest a lot, but the, because of the borrowing capacity shrinks with lower interest rate, they are going to hurt more. And uh, so, so that's the, we did think about a little bit on that. Uh, so there's in finance, there's all this literature about tangible versus intangible capital. Yeah, yeah. Here yeah which is related to that and the fixed cost versus the engineers and wages. Yeah, so the tangibility is related to theta. So basically the tangible, so ex, this is the production function. CD, uh, sorry. Yeah, here. So production function is z to the theta and the h to the eta. And the theta is big, especially theta is one. <laughs> you don't need the maintenance. You just uh, go straight forever. But the eta is big means intangible investment or human capital of the engineer, which owner doesn't have too much control because of non-exclusivity constraint of the market, uh, the, that's become more important. So, eta is big, theta is small, is the 
plants become more intangible and uh, the human capital become more important for the companies. And uh, many of the modern companies, I suspect the, the data is less than one. <laughs> and uh, the insight engineer's contribution is essential for maintenance. And, uh, and uh, if engineer stop working, quality start, start decaying. And also, owner is going to take a kind of view, like uh, what should we do? Like, uh, should we go to the, the, the aggressive route to invest in the property? Or they think specific about the future, they pay slowly before everything. And, uh, so that's the indignity of plant quality or the, the productivity. Yeah. Could I have a go at throwing? Could I, I say something? We have John here as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, can you go forward to the um, intuition part at the end of your yeah. slides? Yeah. So, um, Marcus, when just following what Nobu just said about theta, if theta's not, not too close to one, mm -hmm. that would, you can might think of that as a, as a firm which has got more intangible. So, you know, it's, it's a race between eta and theta. So the more intangible, it's like eta is higher and therefore commensurately theta is lower. Now, when you look at the, this intuition that Nobu has, that we have, <laughs> It's, it's important that theta is less than one. You, you think, you know, the negative term, the present value of fixed costs, is more vulnerable to changes as interest rates because theta is missing there. Mm -hmm. Whereas the plant owner's share is less exposed to interest rate movements because theta is sitting there. So that differential will be greater when theta is less than one, which is like eta being bigger, which is like, more intangible. So the more in, I, I'm thinking that the more intangible it is, using this theta eta ratio as a sort of index of intangibility, the more intangible it is, the bigger the kick here. So more intangible, the plant owner rely more on engineers and uh, long-term revenue is not reliable. <laughs> you have to rely more on near-term revenue, near future revenue. That's where the credit horizon gets shorter. And, uh, but is it, is it fair to get the sign wrong that the tech companies that hurt more in the funding abilities when there's an interest rate cut? Or help primarily non-tech companies? Non-tech. Oh, I heard the non-tech companies less. Non -tech company, actually, the only estate company has an easy time when interest rates go down. Tech company more on the project, and they had a hard time, actually. So, oh, so the, as I said, the uh, stock price is more like a B plus the present value of fixed cost. Therefore, it does go up, usually, interest rate go down. But the, it doesn't go up as much as the present value of fixed cost or building price. That's where the, uh, the that's why low interest rate may hurt the tech company. Can I, can I come in? So th this last loop of the discussion has, has revealed that theta being further away from one accentuates this interest rate effect. Yeah. But I wouldn't want, anyone to think, well, in that case, let's get rid of theta. You know, why not make theta is equal to zero? Well, that, the problem with that is that then the impact of the interest rate on wage disappear. Will, will disappear. So, you know, we're looking, <laughs> the role of theta is quite rich and you don't want it to, we don't want it to be too close to one because we want to have this interesting kick of interest rates. Equally, we don't want it to be too close to zero. Otherwise, it, what we call wage, I must emphasize again, this is not the blue collar wage that we're thinking of here. This is some internal return to inside equity. Um, 
we, we want that to, the, the heart of the model, the heart of the analysis is that um, that is sensitive to interest rates. So when interest rates fall, that what we call wage goes up. So Philip Poss, I think, wanted to ask the question, is this correct? Yes, uh, it's very similar to this. So with intangible capital, it's not just that fixed costs are more important, sunk costs are more important. And uh, Jonathan Haskell especially pushed forward that argument because intangible capital is tied to the company, resale value is pretty low. And uh, so would that materially change uh, the calculus here, if it's yeah. sunk costs, not just fixed yeah. costs. The sunk cost is here the X, actually. X is the initial investment cost for the plant, and it's only initial cost. And uh, when you enter, you pay the X. And the fixed cost is uh, every period you have to pay. And the X is on the initial uh, investment cost. But then uh, the X is going up, then that is making investment uh, harder because the, uh, the gap between borrowing investment cost and borrowing capacity is going up. Does this answer your question? So I'm not sure. I think so, yeah. Right, because yep. like, implicitly you take care of entering like this. On the question of sunk, there are two kinds of sunk costs. There's X that nobody's just pointed to. And there's also this idea that the payments to entrepreneurs, to, sorry, to engineers, if at any date, there will be a historic set of payments that you've already, as a plant owner, you have all already made to engineers. Now they are sunk as well. And in fact, that's a very important part of the analysis that you, as a plant owner, take a sort of sunk cost view of those wages in order to decide whether to keep going. Yeah, so if you go through to the diagram with the red on it. Yeah. You might think, looking at the left-hand side there, you might think, why does the plant owner not just get out at period 11? When, you know, apparently he seems to be paying bigger fixed costs than his revenues. It seems stupid. Why wait till 20? Well, the answer is because this diagram is drawn by contribution, but some of those payments to the, to the engineers are sunk. And that, the nature of that, the word sunk is terribly important to the whole... Um, logic as to why you would carry on till 20. So there are two categories of sunk costs. There's the X, which is an initial sunk cost. And there's also, if you like, the rolling sunk costs of these, what we call wages. Yeah. I don't know whether that gets anywhere near your question either. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think more about it, but I think it does. I have a question, uh, if that's okay. Um, uh, like empirically, um, there seems to be a lot of conclusions uh, that are very interesting conclusions from this model. Empirically, one of them is that the the increase in the fixed costs is higher than the increase in the value of equity. Yeah. Uh, if that's correct, is that something you can um, look at empirically? Uh, also, um, here, the, the second question was probably I was going to Quite very quickly, which is regarding the nature of worker of, of engineer here, which, as John said, are like um, holders of internal equity. Also, here, is that true when um, interest rates are lower? Let's say, I don't know how we think of your work. Is it like a CEO of the engineer here? Is, is that CEO or uh, somebody with stock options? Typically, is that is that the case that they get paid more when interest rates are lower? Yeah. Uh, so. It's a good question. By the way, the we're not saying anything unambiguous here. So it's not that those fixed costs, present values are always higher than the inside. It's more that they can be higher. So I, you know, empirical work is is would be badly needed to see whether there's any part, any data to justify our. 
we're putting this forward as a candidate possibility, not as a sort of 100% um, truth. Yep. Thanks. That was a complicated way of saying that there may be lots of evidence going the wrong way. <laughs> 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 we are not too much empirical, but <laughs> we are more like a providing framework to think about credit horizon and the uh, implication of that. So can I use this model um, to think about labor-intensive and capital-intensive plants and how do we... Can you all speak up? Uh, I couldn't hear well. So. Sorry, can I, uh, can I think about this model? Uh, think about labor intensive and capital intensive plants, like the distinction between that in terms of um, engineers and ownership. Labor intensive and capital intensive plants, the difference is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I see. So, <clears throat> uh, this A is actually, we, we don't have a simple workers here. So production function is the A times Z. You see, the, the reason A times Z is the, this is more like a output minus simple workers weight. And uh, so, so we already subtracted the simple workers weight. What our weight is actually more inside the, uh, the people who are involved in plant quality maintenance and the management. So, so their weight is more like uh, at the, the higher the skilled workers weight instead of unskilled workers weight. And uh, perhaps the, the, when we look at the capital labor ratio, uh, we usually have uh, both the labor like uh, skilled workers as well as unskilled workers. And uh, ours is related to after subtracting unskilled workers' contribution and uh, gross profit, how much it come from the plant quality and uh, how much come from uh, inside the workers, uh, skilled workers' contribution. And uh, so, uh, we have to think about more about the how to map into the data. So 